Then how is my voice coming up? My voice is still a bit yet to be clear, clearer. But is it is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. In recording. Yeah. <coughs> how is our voice on the Because I'm still taking only and then it's not it's a dark dark spot. Yeah, good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to another session of Insights from Exonetus Legal. Last week, um, we did um, start our DV show talking about um, arbitration, majorly focusing on international commercial arbitration. We spoke about arbitration as an alternative to dispute um, resolution. We spoke about the features of arbitration, why most parties to commercial contracts will rather choose arbitration instead of going to court to litigate their disputes. We spoke about the neutrality of the awards, the feature of the fact that the arbitral awards are binding and final. We spoke about the enforceability of the awards in foreign jurisdictions, the confidentiality and privacy of parties' awards. They are not subject to public records like in litigation. We also spoke about another feature of arbitration, which is the time and cost efficiency. We don't need to waste a lot of time in, in court doing arbitration. Rather, in litigation, you can really not tell how long a case will go on for. Today, we're majorly going to continue in our trend of our arbitration discourse, but we'll be focusing on a very interesting aspect of international commercial arbitration, which is the issue surrounding the seat of arbitration in international commercial arbitration. Just to recap again, international commercial arbitration, as we said, is a process of resolving disputes arising out of international commercial contracts as an alternative to settling in court. Disputes are resolved by neutral arbitral tribunal whose decision is final and binding. In every commercial contract, especially in international commercial contracts, even in local commercial contracts, there is always an arbitration clause which gives parties the opportunities to choose how their disputes will be settled via arbitration, how the arbitrators will be chosen, what kind of law or procedure will govern the arbitration proceedings. All these are put in the arbitration agreement under the international commercial contracts or the commercial contracts binding the parties in international trade. So our focus majorly today is going to focus on the seat of arbitration. What is the concept of the seat of arbitration in international commercial arbitration? Majorly, a motivation that keeps makes parties really want to go into arbitration. In international contracts, for instance, which is majorly our major focus today, is, is the award going to be enforceable in foreign jurisdictions? We are in a global world today. A businessman from Nigeria can do business with another businessman from Germany. And they have commercial contracts an agreement between them. However, if you have a dispute, to submit that dispute to arbitration, what would be the motivation for submitting that dispute to arbitration? The principal motivation will be if the award, which is equivalent to a judgment, if it was a court judgment, in an arbitration, the arbitration judgment is referred to as arbitral awards, as we mentioned last week. But the essence of the parties going into arbitration will, whatever judgment, whatever award is given at the end of the day in settling the dispute, will, will it be enforceable in their jurisdiction? And that takes us to a very interesting convention under 
international arbitration, which we call the New York Convention. The Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards, 1958, commonly known as the New York Convention, gives parties, signatories to that convention, countries that are signatories to that convention, it makes any award made in such state or such country enforceable. So if Nigeria, for instance, is part of the New York Convention, which it is, it is, if an arbitral award is given in Nigeria and it's supposed to be enforceable outside Nigeria, it should be able to be enforced in the US because US is also a member state, a signatory state of the New York Convention. So a convention party state must recognize and enforce foreign arbitral awards. This is a very interesting concept, enforceability, as it leads to the seat of arbitration. Before we go to the concept of the seat of arbitration majorly, we're going to talk briefly about the New York Convention. The New York Convention requires the states that have ratified it to recognize and enforce international arbitration agreements and foreign arbitral awards issued in other contrary states, subject, of course, to certain limited exceptions. So in a nutshell, like I said earlier, Germany is a member state of the New York Convention. A businessman from Germany and a businessman from Nigeria, if they do business and they want to settle their disputes and they've submitted to arbitration, Whatever arbitrator award ensues from the arbitral tribunal, such is enforceable both in Nigeria and both in Germany as well, because both countries are signatory states to the New York Convention. Currently, as at the end of the year 2021, we have 169 signatory states that have ratified the New York Convention. This is very interesting and is a laudable development for businessmen involved in international trade because that gives them the opportunity to transact business across continents. And there is no fear of how to settle disputes or submitting disputes to arbitration. As we move forward, we want to explain majorly two considerations concerning the seat of arbitration before we basically explain what the seat of arbitration means. The physical location of the seat of arbitration is not necessarily the same as the jurisdictional seat of arbitration. We're going to explain that. And that's why I said at the beginning that this is a very interesting concept in international commercial arbitration. The seat of arbitration is majorly the physical location and the jurisdictional seat of arbitration is different from the physical location of the seat of arbitration. What is the seat of arbitration? The seat or place of arbitration is the jurisdiction in which an arbitration takes place legally. This must be distinguished up, however, from the physical place where the hearings of the witnesses, where the hearings or the meetings, where the evidences are being taken. So if parties have agreed in the arbitration agreement that their seat of arbitration is going to be London, United Kingdom. Fiscal hearings can be done in Nigeria and not in London. But in their case, the seat of arbitration will be London. But the physical hearings, where they take evidences, where documentary evidence are being submitted, could be Nigeria. Probably because the businessmen involved are Nigerians, and most of the evidences they want to refer to in the arbitration to the arbitration tribunal are located in Nigeria. However, their place of arbitration, the seat of arbitration which is the jurisdiction in which the arbitration will take place, will be London, as they have chosen in the arbitration agreement. So as we move forward today, we're going to explain 
what this system of arbitration duly means, what are the factors that businessmen con consider before choosing their seat of arbitration. Like we said, the seat of arbitration is the jurisdiction in which an arbitration takes place legally. It, however, must be distinguished from the location of any physical hearings or meetings that are held as part of the arbitration proceedings. The hearings of the arbitral proceedings may not necessarily hold in the seat of arbitration. There is a connection between the arbitration proceedings and the law of the seat of arbitration. The Uncitra model law, which is the model law designed to assist member states in reforming and modernizing their laws on arbitral procedures, so as to take into account the particular features and needs of international commercial arbitration. This Uncitra model law states in Article 20, sub clause 2, that regardless of the seat of arbitration, the arbitral tribunal may, unless agreed otherwise by the parties, meet at any place it considers appropriate for consultation among its members, hearing of witnesses, experts of the witnesses of the parties, or for inspection of goods or other property or documents. So invariably, the Central Model Law has given parties to an arbitration the flexibility to hold the arbitral hearings anywhere else apart from the seat of arbitration. So moving forward, we realize that what we call the seat of arbitration, as we have explained thus far, is not necessarily the place where they hear the arbitral proceedings. However, the law of the seat of arbitration must guide the arbitration proceedings. We'll show that as we move forward. In international commercial arbitration majorly, there are usually more than one system of laws or rules that govern the arbitral proceedings. There are at least five systems of laws which can be identified in international commercial arbitration. We'll mention them briefly. One is the law governing the party's capacity to enter into an arbitration agreement. The parties to an arbitration agreement, the parties to the commercial contract, do they have the capacity to enter into that arbitration agreement? There is a law governing the party's capacity to enter that arbitration agreement. <clears throat> There's another law governing the arbitration agreement and the performance of the agreement. There's a law governing the existence and proceedings of the arbitral tribunal, which we call the lex arbitri. Most of the time, this is the law of this place of the arbitration, which is also the law of the seat of arbitration. There's a law governing the existence and proceedings of the arbitral tribunal, which is the lex arbitri, as we said. There's a law of the relevant legal rules governing the substantive issues in dispute, generally described as the applicable law, or the proper law of the contract, or the substantive law. There's also the law governing recognition and enforcement of the award that ensues from the arbitral tribunal. It is important to point out at this stage that the arbitration law at the seat of arbitration, which is the lex arbitri, is not the same as the venue, location, or place of hearings. It only implies that that's the arbitration law that governs the arbitration process. So majorly, the law of the seat of arbitration that the parties have chosen will govern and guide the arbitral process. However, it's not necessarily the same law that governs the venue, 
or place of hearings of witnesses in such cases. What is the difference between the seat of application and venue of hearings? The seat of, of place of application is the primary legal jurisdiction to which the arbitration is attached. This implies the legal location of an arbitration proceeding, which is different from the physical location of any arbitration hearings and meetings. So definitely this detaches the venue of proceedings entirely from the place of the arbitration. So parties may choose, parties on arbitration may choose to hear their matters, to hear the witnesses in a different location that is very convenient for them. So, for instance, if parties have chosen London United Kingdom as the seat of arbitration, what it implies is the law of that seat of arbitration, which is London, United Kingdom, will govern the arbitral proceedings. But their place of hearing of witnesses could be Nigeria if both parties are located in Nigeria. So they don't need to travel all the way most of the time to the seat of arbitration. They could, however, for one reason or the other, the arbitral tribunal would have to sit in London, which is their seat of arbitration, but not necessarily hear witnesses there, probably because of cost. If the essence of the dispute and the issues surrounding the business is in Nigeria, there will be no need to fly witnesses down to the UK because the seat of arbitration is in the UK. No. All they need to do is the UK governs the arbitral process. The law of arbitration in the UK governs the arbitral process, yes, based on agreement of the parties, but their venue of the arbitration, the venue of hearing of witnesses, taking evidences, inspecting documents, inspecting goods, depending on what caused the dispute, could be a different location entirely from London, United Kingdom, which parties are chosen in our scenario as their seat of arbitration. So theoretically, it is possible, like I said, that neither of the parties travels to the seat of arbitration. Importantly, however, the fact that an arbitration hearing is held outside the seat of arbitration does not and cannot in itself change the legal seat of arbitration. Because if parties have agreed that their seat of arbitration will be a particular location, take for instance, we've been using London as our as a example here. It could be the United States, it could be Germany, wherever parties choose. Like we said in our first session, the flexibility of parties to choose where they want to conduct the arbitral process, how they want to conduct the arbitral process, makes arbitration a very unique way of settling disputes, especially in, in commercial contracts. It has been confirmed in a lot of cases that there is only one place of arbitration. And this will be the place chosen by or on behalf of the parties. And it will be designated in the arbitration agreement as their seat of arbitration. Like we said, it does not mean that is where parties will hear their matters. It could be, it may not be. But this is the interesting fact about the seat of arbitration. What are the factors that should be considered while choosing the seat of arbitration, however? There are majorly about five factors that most of the time, parties to international commercial contracts consider before choosing their seat of arbitration. The first thing, neutrality. 
parties may be interested in the neutrality of the venue. The cost of holding proceedings in such cases, in such places. Are parties connected to the place of arbitration or not? Parties to a commercial arbitration, most of the time, want a neutral venue. There are no party to the agreement have any connection to. So when they are choosing the seat of arbitration, they choose a place, a neutral venue. So if they choose the UK and parties are in the United in Nigeria, then UK is a neutral venue for them. To avoid any bias of the contracting parties, they want a seat outside their jurisdiction. So they decide a totally neutral venue, neutral seat as a seat of arbitration. Another factor to consider when parties are choosing their seat of arbitration is, is the place where they are choosing and the seat of arbitration, is it a party to the New York Convention? We explained earlier that the New York Convention gives foreign arbitral awards enforceability. So regardless of anywhere in the world where the arbitral award is issued, it can be enforced in a member state as long as the seat of arbitration is a member state. This factor is very important because the New York Convention is the universally accepted standard for enforcement of arbitral awards. So this is important for enforcement of any resulting award in other New York Convention countries. Like we said now, a lot of countries, currently now 169 countries are members of the New York Convention. They've ratified it. And this makes for ease of business in their countries. Because if they are businessmen, get involved globally with other businessmen in other jurisdictions. If any dispute ensues and they submit to arbitration, the arbitral award can be enforced anywhere in the member state. The third consideration for choosing the seat of arbitration is, is the seat of arbitration law, does it provide an ideal level of judicial interference and control? That is, is there a desired level of delocalization? So the trend in international arbitration laws, such as the model law jurisdictions, suggests a very limited degree of judicial control or highly delocalized arbitration proceedings. In essence, does the judiciary of that seat of arbitration, do, are they friendly to arbitral process, to arbitral proceedings? So if it becomes necessary during the arbitration proceedings, for instance, to approach a court for assistance, are parties assured that they can get their processes done in the courts of the seat of arbitration in record time without any delay? What is the quality of the legal system and the courts in the place of such arbitration where they have chosen and the seat of arbitration? So parties have to consider this before they choose a particular place as their seat of arbitration. If they go to choose a place where their judicial system is very cumbersome, then it might be very, very difficult even for the arbitration proceeding to proceed with ease if they have to approach the court of that seat of arbitration for any assistance during the process of the arbitration. An ideal seat would be one that is not only close to the parties in terms of distance, but also the legal system. That is the point we're making here. So we've mentioned the neutrality of the seat of arbitration or the place of arbitration, whether the seat of arbitration is a party to the New York Convention, 
whether the judicial system of that seat of arbitration is friendly enough to accommodate the arbitration proceeding if they have to approach the courts. Will the court system, will they be able to deal with the matter expeditiously, efficiently, and quickly without wasting time? Then, these are factors to consider before choosing the seat of arbitration. We have also mentioned here that the physical location of the seat of arbitration is not necessarily the same as the jurisdictional seat of arbitration. The choice of the seat will usually dictate the corresponding procedural law to govern the tribunal. This is very important. So when parties are choosing their seat of arbitration or their place of arbitration, the law of that place of arbitration, the law of that seat of arbitration will definitely guide the arbitral process. They cannot go outside that law. Even if hearings and proceedings are not taking place physically in that seat of arbitration. Also, in the context of arbitration agreements within arbitration clusters, while parties will almost certainly agree on their choice of law of the contract, they rarely specify the law to govern the arbitration proceedings. And parties should not make these mistakes because the law of the contract is not the same as the law that governs the arbitration proceedings. The law of the seat of arbitration governs the arbitration proceedings. So it is important for parties to expertly state the choice of the law for the arbitration proceedings, which is different from the law of the main contract that governs their business. So what are our key takeaways here? We have mentioned the New York Convention requires the states that have ratified it to recognize and enforce international arbitration agreements and foreign arbitral awards issued in other contracting states. The primary advantage of the convention is that main arbitration awards made in one country will be recognized and enforced in other state parties to the New York Convention. We mentioned the UNCITRA model law, which is the model law on international commercial arbitration it was initially made in 1985, with amendments adopted in 2006. It's designed to assist states that are parties to the UNCTRA model law in reforming and modernizing their laws on arbitral procedure so as to take into account the particular features and needs of international commercial arbitration. So, in arbitration proceedings, parties will have to refer to the UNCTRA model law in the arbitral proceedings. The seat or the place of arbitration is the jurisdiction in which an arbitration takes place legally. This is, however, distinguished from the location of any physical hearings or meetings that are held as part of the arbitration proceedings. The hearing of meetings, the hearing of witnesses, taking of evidences, does not necessarily have to hold in the seat of arbitration. So it's essential to appreciate, however, the connection between the arbitration proceedings and the law of the seat of arbitration. Because the law of the seat of arbitration guides the arbitration proceedings. We have mentioned that international commercial arbitration usually involves more than one system of law and rules unlike the domestic legal disputes that are litigated in court. We have mentioned the different systems of laws which can be identified, which is the law governing the party's capacity to enter into an arbitration agreement, the law governing the arbitration agreement and the performance of that agreement, the law governing the essence and proceedings of the arbitral tribunal, which is the lex arbitri. Most of the time, the lex arbitri is the law of the seat of arbitration the law, the relevant legal rules, governing the substantive issues in dispute, generally described as the applicable law. So the applicable law governs the issue in dispute. Then also, 
The other type of law which can be identified is the law governing recognition and enforcement of the awards that ensues from the arbitration proceeding. The law of the seat of arbitration will govern the arbitration proceeding. Importantly, we need to know that there is only one place of arbitration, as we have mentioned earlier. We have also stated and highlighted that the venue may be chosen for conveniency purposes. Parties must, under the implication of choosing a seat of arbitration, choose a place where they know that the venue is neutral. The law of the seat of arbitration, their judicial system is friendly enough to accommodate the arbitral proceedings if they have to approach the court. And also, that the seat of arbitration is a member state of the New York Convention. In essence, to best comprehend the factors that may play a part in choosing a state of arbitration, we must always consider the stakeholders in the arbitration proceedings. Apart from the parties, there are the lawyers in the arbitration proceedings. There are the arbitrators, who lawyers who represent the parties, arbitrators who arbitrate the arbitral proceedings. They may want to select a system they are familiar with. This is very, very important. If the lawyer who are representing the parties, the arbitrators, if they are not familiar with the law of the seat of arbitration, it's a disaster from the get-go for the arbitral proceedings. So realistically, the presence of laws and courts that are favorable to international arbitration are chosen as the seat of arbitration. So basically, I believe today, we've been able to enlighten ourselves about the concept of the seat of arbitration. We'll be going deeper as we move on in this series about arbitration, about some other interesting highlights of why parties choose the seat of arbitration. How do they enforce the, the arbitral awards? Thank you very much. Did I, did I talk well? I was, I wasn't, I'm the only speaker of me. Come and see, oh, Satan is a liar. See this, this thing now. You just start flying. That's <laughs> 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 Satan, you're a loser. <laughs> Did I talk well? Yes, it was awesome. Did you understand everything I said? <laughs> okay, what is it of arbitration? Oh, yeah, just what is it of arbitration? Because the only reason is because it's a. Yes, where they are in. No, but to be honest, that's interesting. It's very interesting. Because I, this, this, I did this course when I was doing my master's. And it's, it's really very interesting. Was, I'm still going to write on it. Uh -huh, I want to write this thing. Eh? I'm going to put it on the blog. I want to put it on the blog. Sure, I can send it to you. Uh, but I'll put the, because I don't want to be plagiarizing. So I'm going to put the references. Uh, you know, no, we always put references. So when I put all the references, I'll send it to you. I want to put on the blog, and there are some write-ups too that I've done before. I was even expecting us to have uh, You know, I was rounding up where I work on Monday. Then I slept on Tuesday. Then I started working on, on Wednesday. <laughs> so I put all this.